All right. Today is, what's today, Lord? May 6th, 2023. We're in the fifth month of 2023. Can you believe it? Anyway, we're going to, of course, open up with prayer. And if anybody feels led to pray this morning, the floor is open. If not, I will pray. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are so good. You are so awesome. You are the creator of the universe. You are amazing, God. And so we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you touched us this morning and let us see this day, God. We thank you, God, that you've kept us, you've kept our families, our loved ones, oh God, our nation, our world. We know everything happens by your allowance and by your purpose and will. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that your plans are to prosper us and do us good. Thank you that you're the best place for us, oh God. Thank you that you are consistent. Thank you that you are intentional. Thank you, oh God, for just being God, for being Yahweh, for being the I am that I am, oh God. God, as we come to this time of coming together and reading your word and understanding, oh God, have your way. Have your way in this time, oh God. Let our ears hear what the Spirit is speaking. Let our hearts conceive and understand, oh God. Let our minds understand, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. Whatever we take from this time, God, let us share it. Let us be disciples of you, God, and love on others, sharing the things we've learned from you with them, oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. I'm moving too fast. All right. Our opening scripture comes from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the New King James Version. And it reads, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just, just excuse me, shall live by faith. Thank you, Lord. All right. Today is our first meeting of May. And our next meeting will be the third Saturday, which is May 20th. Um, please, 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 when you get the links, please share them. We're not a click. We're not a closed off group. We definitely want to share what God is teaching us, what we're learning with others. The reminder at the bottom says the point of this group is for us to be united in prayer about the topics and scriptures that we discussed. Excuse me. Yeah, we discussed. So we're going to jump right in with our thoughtful expression. So, of course, please don't be shy. This is time for you to chime in, to give some thoughts, some consideration for our question and to share your thoughts. Amen. So our question says, as believers, why is suffering a vital part of our faith walk? Why is suffering a vital part of our faith walk? Um, and before anybody jumps in, I'm going to throw this part in. 
oftentimes when we're dealing with um, trouble, we're dealing with um, situations that are uncomfortable, we don't like it. You know, it is unraveling, I guess, for us. It's not a fun situation for us. But suffering is necessary. We know that Jesus suffered, right? And his suffering, the intent and the purpose behind him going through was for him to save the world. So why is it important for us, faith walkers, believers, to endure or to experience suffering? All right, the floor is open. Cool. Good morning. Um, hey, hey. It's Michelle. Sorry. Um, I think um, it's right in the sentence. Um, we suffer so that we can grow our faith in God, so that he can okay. stretch our faith, um, so that we can be more dependent on him and not relying on us, so release, relinquishing that control. Um, and I've said this often, we are born into this world. Um, and from day one, we are always um, being taught how to be independent. We should be mm -hmm. independent. We should learn, we should do this, and we should become independent women. Um, but that's opposite from what God teaches us. God wants us to be dependent on him. So mm -hmm. um, this suffering allows us to, you know, increase our faith and trust him more, knowing that um, things will work out for our good and um, we have to grow. In order to grow, we need to suffer. Um, and it's all in the word, learning his character, learning who he is as God, and just being able to have um, a more of a spiritual walk, a better relationship with him. All those things are gained within our suffering. Amen. Thank you, Shelly. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Suffering definitely is necessary to build our faith. And um, you know how the Bible speaks of being a babe in Christ, you know, still being on milk or on the breasts, but we got to mature in God. I believe suffering definitely does that, levels us up in the walk so that we're not just surface level. Christians, we haven't just received Christ and now, okay, we know we're going to heaven and that's the end of it. No, there are deeper levels. There's that ocean deep relationship God wants. And there are purposes and things God has to draw out of us. And in order to draw those things out of us, we've got to endure. We've got to um, experience our faith being what we hold on to throughout our trouble, throughout our suffering. Thank you, Shelly. Anybody else before we move to the lesson? Good morning. Uh, yeah, good morning, good morning. Um, so as I was listening to Shelly, I was thinking um, a perfect example of what she was explaining is in the Bible <clears throat> um, when Rachel, I believe it was Rachel, um, one of Jacob's wives, not Rachel and Leah. And Leah, of course, was the unloved wife of Jacob. Um, and she, for years, thought that having babies from him would make him love her. Right. She kept seeking his affection, seeking his love through her children, thinking that surely because I've given him a son, he will love me. Mm. And that never happened. Um, but when she decided to stop seeking him for the love mm. and seek God, and so then when her last child came, she dedicated that child to God and not to Jacob. And when she did that, God was able to turn her heart. So Ray, J Leah never left Jacob. She continued to stay married to him because, of course, they don't believe in 
divorce. So she um, stayed married to him for years, but not receiving that love. But God rewarded her because her children were the line, was the lineage of Jesus and hmm. not, you know. Rachel's. Yes, and not Rachel's. So he rewarded her for sticking out through the suffering, mm. sticking it out, um, accepting the fact that because it, it wasn't her fault. It had mm -hmm. nothing to do with her, mm -hmm. but she had to accept the fact that it wasn't your fault. However, you're in this suffering and, and hold on to that because I'll reward you in the end. It may not be in this lifetime. And I'm sure she had some good days. It wasn't all bad. Um, however, she, she endured her suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. I'm sorry. Bill. I just wanted to jump back oh, in. Yeah. That was so good because <laughs> <Wasn't it? laughs> because I'm just thinking like through your suffering, will you will you trust me? Yeah. Will you, me? Will you do what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Through that mm -hmm. suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then for that, I will reward you double for your trouble, just mm -hmm. like Job. Yes. And so yes. I'm just thinking about all those stories in the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. call on me through your suffering, praise me during your suffering, yes. acknowledge me during your suffering. I think all yes. of those are key points. Trust that I'm going to even sustain you, right? Throughout the the trouble, the suffering, the uncomfortableness. That's good. Miss Billings, you're so full of the word. I love it. Yes. Come on, Leah lineage was that of Jesus. <laughs> So as you said too, Ms. Billings, she might not have saw the fullness of her faith throughout the suffering, but, you know, like you said, her children, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Through her children, right? They received the blessing because of her faith. She turned from looking to her husband to looking to God. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? That was good, Ms. Billings. Thank you. Oh, thank you, God. Did I hear Mike? I don't want to leave nobody out before I move. Yes, good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to add, um, I used to think of uh, fasting as suffering. Mm. And um, it's just amazing as you go through different seasons of your life, how you begin to see things very differently or you learn different lessons from what you thought uh, you were learning about one thing or one specific Bible story or one specific scripture. It always seems to have a new look or a new message for you when you start to grow. And so I, I brought that up simply because um, everything that I'm reading, every author or every time I read something about fasting, when I think about that pushing away of the food or the television or social media or whatever it is that you know that you need to just push aside or set aside, it really doesn't begin to feel like um, suffering. It begins to feel like growth because you give yourself or you allow yourself that time to immerse into scripture, to have, to, to, to grow and to continue to use those particular things to strengthen you because the word of God is what is will it is what will strengthen us. So when we delve into that, you it no longer becomes a struggle or something that you think you're giving up. You mm. begin to become so much stronger that you think, oh my gosh, this is this is what I this is where I need to be, or this is not what I thought it was going to be. Yes, it's going to be hard. That that's going to build the character. But mm. I think that the the strength comes when you um see that what you have run from or what you have pushed aside was nothing like what you thought the struggle would be or the suffering would be. But I definitely that reward, Michelle. I I I have to agree with that reward. <laughs> I love that you said, um, and I'm a paraphrase, I'll just sum it up. Basically, it's not that you're losing something, but it's really a gain. So turn it down your plate in fasting. Yeah, if you're new to it or whatever, you know, you might feel like, oh, Lord, how am I going to do this? 
But really, when you get into the thick of it, you're like, wow, what I'm gaining is so much more than what I thought I was losing. Amen. Thank you, mama. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. I yeah, like, thank you for that, the way you worded that. Okay. Yes. All right. Anybody else? All right. We're going to get right to it. And um, last meeting. Oh, Lord, what I did you. Oh, you. Okay. <laughs> last meeting, our topic was divine alignment. <clears throat> and so we just looked at Daniel and learned how he and who we today know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but they were all from Judah, and their Judean names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were trained to work um, in King Nebuchadnezzar's palace. Long story short, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He asked all the sorcerers, enchanters, and all these magicians and people, astrologers, what his dream was, nobody could tell him. And so he like, all right, kill off all the wise men. And of course, Daniel and the three were, were wise men. And so Daniel went to the king and was like, hold on, give me some time. I'll be able to interpret it. Long story short, Daniel saw God. He went to God and said, hey, show me, Lord. And guess what? God answered his prayer. And so he was, and he was able to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream and the takeaways that we needed to understand about being aligned or agreeing with God was agreement with the gifts God has given us, agreement with the assignment or assignments he's given us, and then we've got to agree with our faith in him. Amen. So now, today, our title, but the just shall live by faith. And so just a reminder, those dates are reminders that in your personal prayer time, in your daily reading of the word and praying that you would remember to pray about these scriptures, pray about what we're meeting about today. And our next meeting again will be May 20th. So please, ladies, remember to pray. If you're watching the recording, please, you pray as well about these things and I pray that God will continue to reveal even more so in my other Bible study group um, we have been studying Habakkuk and I just had to share this um, because it was so relevant to to what I'm experiencing right now so um, all the scripture today that I'm going to refer to comes from the New King James Version Right now, we're going to focus in on chapter two of Habakkuk, verses one through four. And there are only three chapters, so I definitely encourage you to read Habakkuk. So um, let me see what I can get. Uh, Nana on here for real. <laughs> I'm sorry, I digress. Uh, Miss Bacon, if you are here, um, can you read two for me? That very first verse two one. I will stand is what it starts with. Sure. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Sorry, I know you're probably getting ready, but <laughs> I just called uh, them. Chapter, I mean verse two. Yeah, well, the very first sentence. It's, it's chapter okay. 2, verse 1. Um, I will stand see. my watch and set myself on a rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Okay, right there. Thank you, thank you. So um, I highlighted rampart because that stuck out to me. And when I looked it up, it was something unpleasant or unwelcome going unchecked, Right. So um, Habakkuk um, questioned God. And if you read chapter one, you'll see he asked God specific questions. 
And God answered him. And so here he's saying, so I'm going to watch. I'm going to stand and I'm going to look and I'm going to set my attention on this um, judgment that Judah is receiving, right? And this judgment, of course, was happening at the hands of the Babylonians. And who was the king of the Babylonians at the time? Nebuchadnezzar. So he's like, okay, I'm about to sit and watch. I'm going to look. I'm going to pay attention. And then I'm going to watch to see what will what the Lord will say to me and what I will answer when he corrects me, right? So then verse 2 says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablet that he may run who reads it. Verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, meaning though it takes some time, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So I believe the Lord was referring to this judgment that he was bringing on Judah. Judah had been worshiping idols. Judah had been doing unpleasing, displeasing things in the sight of God. And so he brought judgment on them through Babylon, right? They came and conquered them, took over, um, tortured and killed the king and just did a lot of things. And so God, the Lord was saying to Habakkuk, write it down, write the vision I've given you, make it plain. So when they'll read it, they'll run, right? And there's an appointed time that this judgment on Judah is going to come. And exactly what I said I'm going to do, it's going to happen. It's going to take a little while wait for it because it's going to happen. Because what I say, I'm the Lord. And what I say is going to come to pass. Verse 4, behold the proud, his soul is not upright, but the just shall live by faith, by his faith. Habakkuk, um, just to give you a little background on one of him, he was one of Judah's prophets. He was from Judah. And his name means one who embraces. So when we get, when we got to chapter two, after he questioned God and God gave, and the Lord gave him his answer, then he had more questions. Then the Lord answered him again. He began to realize, you know what? Let me look. Let me pay attention. Let me watch. And then the Lord told him, hey, write this vision down. Write that he may run who reads it. For the vision is for a set time. It's for an appointed time. But at the end, it's going to speak and it will not lie. So again, what God said he was going to do in this particular case, the judgment that he said he was going to place upon Judah for their disobedience, for their worshiping of idols, for their turning away from God, for them turning to um, ungodliness, it's going to happen. And it's going to take a little while, but surely it is going to come. But verse 4. What I love, behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. But, and we know that when we hear and when we see but, it combats what was previously said. So the proud, his soul is not right. But the just shall live by his faith. Amen. The just shall live by his faith. So what justifies us is our faith walk. What makes us just, righteous, upright? Our walk, our faith, our belief. And remember the word says that without faith, it's impossible. It can't happen for us to please God. So we are um, justified. We are true believers. Our hearts are in the right place when we live according to our faith in God, when we live according to the faith of our salvation. Amen. All right. Discussion time before we move to our next slide. Anybody want to chime in? All 
All righty. We're going to move. So then we look at Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. 17 through 19. Uh, Mama, you mind reading verses 17 through 19 for me? Okay, of course, I just took my glasses off. <laughs> And they're not the real glasses, they're readers. That's why I'm not trying to keep them on too long. Okay. But I think I can, you said which first? The very first, that um, yellow highlighted, that very, those first three verses up under. Okay. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine, Though the labor of the olive may fail. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is, I'm struggling. Okay, I got it. I got it. No Maria, problem. no, Maria Parker, you got it. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Let me see. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we yes, can hear you. We can hear you. Good morning. Okay. Um, through, it says, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields ye yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high heels. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the teamwork. So, you, you know, I, I have uh, older eyes too, so I had to blow it up, but <laughs> that's a very powerful word. Right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So what Habakkuk was saying here through all of this, um, you know, destruction, judgment that God was bringing on Judah, the, the fig tree not going to blossom, the fruit on the vine is not there. The labor of the olive may fail. The fields, there's no food growing in the fields. Um, the flock is cut off from the fold. There are no herd in the stalls, all of this desolation and all this as a result of the judgment. Yet, will I rejoice in the Lord? That is a faith statement. Also, um, as you go back and read Habakkuk 1 through 3, you'll see that Habakkuk, one of the things he was questioning was, Lord, why would you use Babylon to punish Judah when they are, they're more wicked than us? Why would you use the more wicked nation to punish us? But again, God is God. He can use whatever he sees fit to carry out what he wants to do. Amen. But I love in verse 18, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make my walk, make me walk on my hind heels. Um, I got to bring up one of the ladies in my other Bible study group. She brought up walking on hind feet meant that um, when a deer trots or runs or whatever, the front two feet, of course, go first. And then the back feet or the hind feet step in the very same places that the front feet were, right? So they go in the precise spot that the front feet did. So the hind feet hold you, right, in place. So imagine the deer's going, the front feet step there, then the hind feet, right? The front feet step in another set of places, then the hind feet. And so I, I envision that to be in my faith walk, God goes the front feet and then I come directly behind him. 
He orders, right, those steps. I follow him, right? And even the hinds feet, think of it this way. Um, you know how you can see goat, deer, whatever, on the little thin uh, little crevices of the, um, what is it, Lord? The ledge, those hind feet can hold them on the, the little smallest little rock or little ledge and keep them and sustain them without them tipping over or falling over. Thank you, Lord. All right. My time is running, so let me get to Galatians 3 and 11. But that no one is justified or declared righteous by the law in the sight of God um, is evidence for the just shall live by faith. So again, the law is not justifying you, but the just, the righteous, the upright are going to live by faith. And then Hebrews 10, 36 through 38. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and not tarry. That's Jesus. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back. So we are the just. We do live by faith. Amen. All right. Anybody want to, I think I heard somebody where that was an accident. Um, but I would like to say something about faith, the relationship between faith and, and time. Um, mm -hmm. we, we want things and we believe God for things um, when we are starting our struggle, the initial part. But um, sometimes things happen, like that scripture said, there are no cattle, no herd in the field. And, you know, things may not be coming to, into fruition quickly enough for us. And when that happens, um, it's that endurance, that hanging on, that continual um, belief that God has it in his own time. Mm -hmm. we, I, I feel for me, I know he can do all things. I've seen him do many things, but that endurance, that, that hanging on in the midst of not seeing it happen right now, um, mm. it's, it's the struggle because I have, I feel like I have right now problems and I need a right now solution. But right. God is in control and his time and his ways are better than my time and my ways are better than my thoughts. And mm -hmm. I have to, the only way I'm going to continue to have the faith that I need is to continue to um, plug into scriptures such as these to remind me it's not my time. It's God's mm -hmm. time. It's not the way I think the answer should be. God has he has the master plan. I don't always see it. That's why faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and that yeah. whole waiting and not seeing and, and believing and not having it today and saying, yet will I, yet will I um, mm. have joy in, 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 the, in God in the midst of it. That's the part that I'm um, asking that you guys pray that God strengthens me in that. Um, as I go through these trials and tribulations. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I love that you brought up waiting um, because as you were talking, it made, it made me think of waiting and trusting God also produces those the fruit of the spirit because patience mm -hmm. is one of them. Amen. Long suffering, right? So Amen. to be built up, to even produce or show the fruit of the spirit, we've got to wait. We've got to not try to put God in our box, but we've got to trust him. And I love that word yet. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will joy in God. All right. Anybody else? I, we got I three want, minutes. Come on. Come I, on. I do. I just wanted to say that this reminds me of Isaiah 60, 22, mm -hmm. that says, you know, when the time is right, I, the Lord will make it happen. And so um, 
I just, I just realized that, you know, when your faith, when you're going through something, you, you, you have to have the faith that God is going to do what he said he's going to do, whether it's what you want it to be, because mm. God is all knowing and what God does is what's best for us. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that's hard for mm-hmm. us to, to understand that. But in the end, you realize that God created us. Who are we to doubt our creator? Come you know? on. And so I just, I just thank God for um, a faith because, yes. you know, it's impossible to please God when you don't have faith. Hmm. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So glad you came on. <laughs> but yes. I, coupled with that and what the other young lady said prior to, going mm-hmm. back to your first question, that's why suffering is important. Suffering mm. is a part of the natural cycle, I believe, of Christendom or mm. being a Christian. You got to suffer so you can have the faith, so you can have the patience, and so you can wait to buckle us up and make us endure. It brings mm. us closer, as someone said earlier, but it's necessary. It's not a bad thing like we've been led to believe. It's mm. like when you... um have a cut and the cut has to heal. Usually it hurts. Hmm. But then the scab comes on, the scab falls off, it's healed. So I think it's a necessary, going back to your first question, it's a necessary part, but it ties in everything that everybody said. Beautiful. I love the analogy of the cut. (laughs) It's going to take time and it hurts, but it's healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Y'all, 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 y'all don't know how y'all bless me. My goodness, my Lord. All right. So um, as we've done in the past, time is definitely running out, but it's all good. Remember to take care of those physical bodies just as we're building our spirits. Get your stretches in, eat your healthy meals, drink plenty of water. Do, do right by your temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, prayer time. I don't want to cut it and the thing cuts and all of that. So I'm going to encourage you as soon as we close out, please, 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 please go ahead and pray. Amen. Thank y'all. This was beautiful. I thank God that he continues to just work through this group. Thank y'all for sharing out. And remember that the just live by faith. I love y'all and that's it for today. See y'all next meeting.